Coming up in today's video, we take a look at how I paint my 28mm bolt action chindits from Warlord Games. The chindits offered by Warlord Games are some of my absolute favourite looking sculpts in 28mm, so I really couldn't resist. Stick around until the end of the video as I discuss who this model is depicting. Let me know in the comments how you found this video and what you would like to see next. Okay guys, so to start off with, I'm base coating my model in German camo black brown. You could use a lighter colour if you wanted to, um, but I like the black brown for this. And then to paint our jungle green uniform, I'm using green grey. Now you can use a variety of different greens for this. I've used gunship green, which is a lot darker and brighter than green grey but you've got to remember these models are chindits and chindits were long range penetration units um, so they were in the jungle for extended periods of time without resupplies and obviously a change of clothing so you want to fade the uniform if you can unless you're trying to get a really crisp look so I'm using green grey for that it's going to be a faded jungle green now I'm painting the webbing so I'm using Russian uniform for this this is my go-to when I'm painting any late war uh, British webbing and the webbing for the chinnits was no different it was um, green or tinted green um, and again you want to sort of fade it if you will so that means that we're going to be using a lighter color just because as I said these are chinnits these aren't your average um, troops that are getting the chance to resupply on occasion these were very rarely resupplied um, especially not in quick succession at least now I'm going over the uniform and the webbing with umbar wash so umbar wash is a brown wash from Vallejo um, and I'm making sure that I'm being quite generous but just make sure you're not letting that wash pool if you let that wash pull, you'll create really dark spots um, and they just won't look natural. So just keep brushing it in and work it around. So I'm going back over the green grey now. So I'm leaving the darker green grey that's just had that brown wash over it. So you'll see that that green grey has now been affected and it's very dark. Um, so I'm using this green grey to go back over it and now I'm picking out the highlights. So as you can see with the trouser pocket there, I'm picking out different parts of the pocket which you'll be able to see especially at 28 millimeter uh, scale you'll be able to make it out really easily and the details will just pop for you quite naturally when you're painting the little bits that you can see now i'd probably use a smaller brush for this i believe i'm using a double zero uh, brush from mig uh, for this model so try and use something similar if you can now I'm using a 70-30 ratio of green grey to German camo beige World War II. So this is just going to reduce the colour slightly so we can further our highlights again. And I'm just going to be picking out all the details but leaving some of that original green grey that we just put on on the previous step as well. So just pick out the details and just keep building up those layers until the very final highlight which will be coming up in just a moment. So the final highlight is now a one-to-one -one ratio, so we're building those colours up as I've said just previously. So we want to make sure that we keep building those colours up and we keep highlighting the different areas that are really sticking out, so all the details that you can see with your eye, and we just keep painting those details. So making sure we're picking out creases in his trousers, picking out the bits of the pockets that you can see on the trousers, anything like that, but don't smother the whole thing in there you only want to add just a little bit of this color which will just help all of those layers that we've put down really go in sync with each other and look the part so as we've just done with the uniform it's now the time to do it with the webbing so we're using russian uniform again so this is our color that we use we've then put the umbar wash over the webbing and we're going back over the webbing with that original russian uniform color now try and pick out the details as I've said. Webbing is obviously a little bit different to a uniform so you want to pick out if there's joins between different parts of the webbing so where the bag meets the straps for example, uh, the straps of the actual bag itself, the water bottle, uh, anything that you can see that's got a bit of detail this is what you want to 
grab and leave the rest in that dark color. Now we want to give it a highlight. So we're using Russian uniform Iraqi sand at a 70-30 ratio or seven parts um, Russian uniform and three parts Iraqi sand, however you want to look at it. Um, and again, just building up those colors. So I'm leaving some of that original Russian uniform. Um, I'm probably painting about 70% of the equipment in this now highlight color, highlighted color, or 50%. It really, you just have to work it in, look at it. And if you start thinking, I'm putting on a bit too much, then you know I've got, I've got to stop here now. But just put little bits on at a time and then your eye will tell you, okay, I've put on enough now. I don't need to go anymore um, with this color. And then the very final highlight is Russian uniform Iraqi sand at a one-to-one -one ratio. And you're just picking out the very fine details. You can see I'm picking out the real fine details of the holster for his pistol. So I'm just doing the very top of that holster. I'm doing the little band that goes around the pocket of that holster. I'm doing part of the straps where the strap meets the belt for example um, you could paint these parts in silver as well you don't have to paint them in green anything that was like sort of like a metallic part of the strap you could paint in those colors but i just don't think it's necessary for myself anyway. now i use a brown glaze this step really isn't necessary if you're not really if you don't have it or you can't get access to a brown glaze but a brown glaze is just going to tint this uniform and I think really finish the job. So now with that done, we're going to be painting the various parts of his equipment. So to start off with his machete holster, we're using German camo medium brown and exactly the same principle as the rest of the uniform. We're going to paint it all, we're going to put a wash on it, we're going to highlight it with two different stages or build up those layers. Don't forget the grip on this pistol as well. So I'm using uh, German camo medium brown for this. Some pistols had like a black grip, it's really up to you. So to paint any of the metallic colors, so the samurai sword that he's holding or um, the pistol, I'm using base lead belcher from Citadel. It's a darker silver color, so it's really great uh, for putting this color on then putting on a black wash over it and then adding that color on again. You can then further highlight it with an even brighter silver if you want. So just make sure that you're painting any of those metallic areas and, and just yeah, take your time here because you don't want to make a mistake where the model's you know, pretty much painted now, you're just filling out all the little details. So to paint his mug, I'm using Saddle Brown. Remember these were chindits, so anything that could give, or give them away, um, they would try and avoid. So a brown cup would be more preferable than a white cup, for example. So I'm painting Saddle Brown for that cup. Then the lanyard for his pistol, I'm using old wood for this one. Um, be very careful here, uh, especially if you're doing it the way I do, where I do the uniform and the equipment. Uh, just try not to make a mistake. You could do all of this step and then just do one massive wash. Um, I just like to make things very difficult, obviously. And then for the water bottle, I'm using English uniform. So English uniform is actually a really good color for the water bottle, in my opinion, especially from looking on reference pictures on, on the old internet. Um, it, it really is a good color for the water bottle. And then for the grip of the machete, I'm using flat earth. I wasn't really sure where to go with the machete. I just looked at some pictures on Google and some of them had like a brown handle. So I just thought, you know what, or a wooden handle. So I thought, you know what, I'm just gonna go for it and just paint them in flat earth. All right, so now I'm going over um, all of what I've just done again, but I'm using like a bit more of a finer wash. So I'm using unbar wash, I'm using a smaller brush and I'm just capturing the equipment. I don't want to go over the uniform because the uniform's complete, it's done. I'm happy with that. So just make sure you do that. Now I'm painting the gold part of his samurai sword um, and I'm using Vallejo gold for that. You could put a lighter, color down and then use gold to go over the top of it it's really your call on that one okay so my camera failed me on this part so i used old wood um, and then beige for the pistol strap and german camera medium brown and orange brown for the machete holster and then the water bottle was english uniform and then the final highlight was khaki gray so in that order first one is the base color and the second one is the highlight color and then for his boots, I'm using German grey. So the boots were black, or they looked black from what I could make out. Anyway, you could maybe paint them a really dark brown. Um, but, you know, 
black's good so German grey is great for that you can put a black wash over the top of that and then highlight them with German grey and when you're basing it just dry brush some of the basing colour over it and you've got yourself a perfectly worn pair of boots. So to do the flesh I'm using base flesh from AK Interactive. I really like their um, flesh set that um, AK Interactive have. Um, so if you haven't got your hands on that, I'd, I'd highly recommend it. Obviously, people have their own different techniques for painting, painting flesh, but it really just comes down to your own taste. All right, so now I'm building up those layers. So I'm using base flesh and light flesh at a seven to three ratio. So seven parts base and three parts light. And I'll just keep building that color up until I'm happy. And then the final highlight of light flesh, um, and I'm just picking out the tops of his cheeks, bits of his nose, so you can see the different parts of his nose, his ears, his brows, um, anywhere that was sort of easy to spot. Uh, don't forget that these guys, again, were chindits, so they were in the summer heat or the jungle heat for a lot of the time. Um, so they're going to be a bit more tanned than your average Englishman, like myself, I'm, I'm very pale. Um, so yeah, you do what you want to do, uh, obviously make him a little bit more tanned if you can. Now I'm using flat brown for his hair. So this particular gentleman, uh, the, one, the one that won the VC, he had dark hair. So I'm giving him a flat brown hair color. And now I'm going back over that those boots. As I said before, I've put the black wash down, which I unfortunately forgot to show you. Um, so now I'm using German gray as the final highlight. And the same with the silver. Um, I'm going back over the silver after that black wash. I'm going back over the flat brown hair, so I've put a wash of umbar wash over the top of that and now I'm going back over the flat brown and I'm just giving it like a bit of a dry brush if you will, but a very soft dry brush um, just to pick out some of those those bits of hair that are shown in the detail. And then a final highlight of that hair will be with beige brown just to add in a little bit more um, of that lighter colour just so it makes it pop just that ever, ever so slightly, uh, that little bit more at least anyway. Now for the blood, I used shadow flesh um, and I watered it down. Um, this guy had his arm pretty much severed off, so I went quite gory with this one. I'm assuming that um, you know if you've got a massive cut in your arm where it's pretty much hanging on by a thread, uh, it's going to cut some arteries and you're going to lose quite a bit of blood. So you know, do what you need to do with that. Now there's a final bit of his buttons on his webbing, so I'm using German camo black brown um, just to get the highlight of them and then I'm using copper to go over those buttons just just to give it a little added detail on those um, bits of webbing okay so here is the finished chindit so this chindit was an absolute pleasure to paint and my hat really does go off to warlord games for creating a miniature depicting George Albert Carnes who was a lieutenant in the South Staffordshire regiment so he was part of the Chindits as we know them, and he won the Victoria Cross. To fully appreciate why he won that Victoria Cross, I think it's only fair that I read a little bit from Wikipedia from a witness that wrote to his family telling the story of Lieutenant Carnes. The first thing I saw on reaching the path was a horrible hand-to-hand -hand struggle going on further up the hill. George Carnes and a Japanese soldier were struggling and choking on the ground. And as I picked up the Japanese rifle and climbed up towards them, I saw George break free and picking up a rifle bayonet, stab the Japanese soldier again and again like a madman. It was only when I got near that I saw he himself had already been bayoneted twice through the side and that his left arm was hanging on by a few strips of muscle. He had found the strength to fight was a miracle, but the effort had been too much and he died the next morning. So I'm sure those that were probably listening to this would agree that he is a, a much deserved recipient of the Victoria Cross and again my hat really does go off to Warlord Games for producing this model. Anyway with all that said and done absolutely over the moon that I can add this to my collection. He is going to be awesome in my display cabinet. But yeah, sorry about the dodgy camera work. Um, I'm transitioning new to a new camera, so I haven't quite got the settings correct, obviously. Um, but yeah, 
uh, hopefully you got something out of this video if you're new here please like and subscribe it really does help the channel grow and until then i will catch you guys at the next one thanks